Hello and welcome to Y24 News Sports World Cup coverage. Three days are already behind us. Half the groups already played their first game and it's as exciting and surprising as possible. I want to welcome, as always, Motale Spiegler. Hi Motale, thank you for being with, Good day. with us. And Mirab Sabir will join us later. Now let's get it started. Group C got into action last night. Colombia proved they're much more than just Redamel Falcao. The South American side beat Greece 3-0. Later on, the Ivory Coast came back from a goal down to beat Japan 2-1. Two quick second half goals, Colombia and the Ivory Coast, as expected, looking good on the way to the second round. On to Group D, and if we could expect what happened in Group C, the first game here was anything but expected. Costa Rica proved to be a force to be reckoned with as they were very impressive in their 3-1 win over South American champions Uruguay and in a clash between two former world champions, Italy beat England 2-1, Mario Balotelli scoring the winner for the Azzurri. Motale, we called this Group D the group of death, three former world champions. We thought one of them will not, at least one of them will not be in the next stage. With Costa Rica, maybe the fact that they're there is what makes it the group, group of, of death. Life. Group of life. Can you imagine they arrived so excited and nobody mentioned them even before. And uh, 90 minutes they just played off Uruguay and, you know, maybe Uruguay are still uh, celebrating the winning in 1950. Yes, they maybe. were much better. They it, won the game. We shouldn't even think that Uruguay lost it. Costa Rica won it. Even when Uruguay Wonderful was surprise. leading, Costa Rica was the better side. All over the game and uh, they scored, they defended, they are young, they are quick, they are together. Wonderful performance. And now everybody in Uruguay is expecting Luis Suarez to be their, their savior. He will probably, probably be fit for their second match against uh, England. Is he going to be the one to save the day? Because they have defensive problems. He will not help I, there. I doubt. I saw him yesterday on the bench, like uh, sitting like this and thinking, can I help them? I'm not sure. One man show it's behind us long time ago. Nobody can win a game alone. You can see from the beginning of the uh, World Cup, Neymar can score when the others are playing well. Robben and Van Persie are scoring when the team is well balanced. Zuarez will not be enough because Uruguay is not good at this stage. And now Uruguay will face England in their ma next match. And England, we saw, very impressive on offense, very naive on defense again. Listen, it was like uh, uh, everything could happen in this game. Pirlo made uh, Italy better. Sterling show us that England has a future, and but they, for and they that good, game, good attacking force, but for, only there. For that game, they were second best. It was a quiet, good game, open game. Everyone could win, but as I said, Pirlo as a pivot, everybody around him well balanced. England, as you said, not so good in defense, but they are okay, and I think that they are still in the picture of qualifying for the next stage. Well, right now, England is disappointed, and they were also disappointing in the previous World Cup, where they lost in the second round to Germany. But it could have been different if Golan technology was implemented back then in South Africa. Before losing 4-1, England scored a legitimate goal that should have tied the game at 2-all, but the referee decided the ball did not cross the line. Had it been awarded, who knows where that game could have gone. After that incident, even the old-fashioned FIFA understood it's impossible to stand by technology. And now, for the first time in World Cup, goal line technology is finally implemented. Mirab Sabir with the story. It seems inevitable, sports and technology. For years, different sports around the world have been adopting various methods of technological assistance. Whether it's on the court or on the pitch, in the form of a replay or goal line sensors, sports technology is here to stay. And for the first time ever in World Cup history, FIFA are using goal line technology. The adaptation is the result of ongoing demands from fans and an obvious mistake in South Africa in 2010. England was denied a clear goal versus Germany. German-based goal control was chosen to develop the technology for Brazil, which consists of a set of cameras that will know exactly where the ball is. It's a digital system. It uses uh, seven cameras per goal and the cameras are mounted on the catwalk. And the cameras are taking 500 pictures per second each. And these pictures are transmitted by fiber optics to a computer system. And when the ball crosses the goal line, the referees receive a message on their special watches within a matter of seconds. Goal Control tested its technology thousands of times before the games began, and its CEO is extremely confident in his product. 
I don't know what exact number of shots, uh, but I think it is more than 10,000 shots which were indicated perfectly. So uh, why shouldn't it work now uh, during the uh, biggest uh, competition in the world? It will work, I promise. One of the benefits of this system is its ability to help curb another huge problem FIFA faces match fixing. We can say this system is not able to manipulate because the system is offline working. Offline means no internet connection, only uh, officials, match officials are able to, to uh, have uh, the, the result on their watches. But even with the guarantees and the tests, football is a game played and refereed by humans. And the referees overseeing the matches still have to be on top of their game. Prepare the game perfectly know exactly how every teams are going to play. 4-4-2, 4-3-1-1, uh, contra-attack, pressing, pressing in the middle, pressing in defense. Referee have to understand that. Technology is only one help. Tennis already uses the Hawkeye system. American sports give their refs the benefits of instant replay. And finally, those in charge of world football took a step in the right direction. And Marav, you're here with us. Uh, you follow American sports over there in the NBA, in the NFL, even in the NHL. They use instant replays all, all the, time. the time. And it's but constantly growing. The benefits growing. are huge. There are a lot of benefits, and especially now you see being implemented not only in those big three, but in baseball as well. And that's one of the bigger things that it's really, we've seen a couple heartbreaking things in baseball where they've lost perfect games, pitchers have lost no hitters because the umpires made a mistake. And now they are using instant replay. So people, used to, you mentioned yourself, Germany, England, heartbreaking for England that that wasn't counted as a goal. And now they're using this benefit of technology to make sure that this doesn't happen to teams. It doesn't happen to individual players in baseball where they do have perfect games taken away from them. And probably the sport that this is most similar to, this goal line technology, is hockey. Everything's happening so quickly. You can see the puck go in and out of the net like that and miss it. And they do have that goal line technology where you hear the sirens, the lights go off, everybody in the arena you knows have, there you, was a goal. You have to use it. And Motale, Mirav spoke about the heartbroken English in the, in the 2010 World Cup. Had this technology existed in 1966, Maybe England wouldn't even have had that one World Cup they do have because that's your first I goal. You. I think it's probably, it, it was probably not I in. I told you, I was there in Wembley and I shouted, it's not a goal. I even didn't need the camera. But I, as Miraf said, this will change for the good and it's about time. We are in 2014. It's about time to use it, to enjoy the game and not to let a big question mark every uh, so many efforts people are putting into the game. And Mirav, we're three days into the World Cup, so World Cup te uh, goal line technology is there, beautiful. Still a lot of other mistakes. Th that penalty in the first match. Exactly, we saw it there. in the opening will, match. Will we see um, technology implemented in more fields of the game? You definitely, you're already seeing it. They already have now even the smaller things. It may not be cameras watching the goal, but they have the foam lines that now they're using. The next thing that you may sign, tr see them try and implement is instant replay that we've seen in the NBA for buzzer beaters. We see in the NFL, whether they set that aligns. The tougher, it's going to be a lot tougher in football because obviously the clock doesn't stop unless it's for something very serious. That penalty, it did stop. So they could have used instant replay and that could have saved a goal for, and it may have ended as a 2-1 or anything could have happened after that. Happened. But that is probably the next thing it's going to be a lot tougher to implement because of the whole time and, and clock we will thing. probably see um, pressure to add um, more technology to the game. Rob, thank you very much. Thank you. And now let's turn our attention to the action coming up tonight. Group F will get underway with a match in the Maracana between Argentina and Bosnia. The other game between Iran and Nigeria will be held tomorrow. Argentina are, of course, one of the big favorites, having participated in all but four World Cups, winning the coveted trophy twice. For young Bosnia, this is the first World Cup experience. Mirab Savir takes a look at this David Goliath duel. A true story of David and Goliath. Argentina has appeared on football's greatest stage 15 times, won the most coveted trophy twice, and this time around, FIFA ranked the squad fifth. On the other side of the field is Bosnia, first time appearing in the World Cup. No titles, ranked 21st. The group stage seems like a fairly easy one for the Argentinians. Bosnia, Iran and Nigeria are minor bumps in the road for Leo Messi and his team, who haven't brought home the title since 1986. It's been a long time since Argentina was among the four finalists of the World Cup. 
And for a country as football crazy as ours, it's too long. But as good as Messi is, the squad knows winning a third title is a group effort. Not all the responsibility has to fall on Leo. We all have to contribute with what we know to try to reach our objective. We must remain calm, we must work hard this week, so when the ball touches the ground and we play our first game, we don't make mistakes. And then there's Bosnia, competing in the games for the first time since they gained independence in 1992. The Zmajevi may rely on Edin Zeko, the Manchester City striker, or their top-notch goalkeeper, Asmir Begovic. But it's a steep hill to climb for the newcomers, and the squad knows their first test will be their biggest test. For sure Argentina is a favourite side there, but I hope that somehow we will manage to surprise Argentina. We played against them a couple of months ago and we lost, but we know that we can do much better than that. Our performance at the World Cup will be a completely different story. The team comes into the World Cup with their hearts on their sleeves. In recent weeks, the small country was devastated by floods. And with a group where spots two, three and four are wide open, it's resilience that may push Bosnia to the next stage. Motale, Argentina, always a very, very talented uh, team. Big names, Leo Messi, of course. The question is, is it going to be Argentina against Bosnia or Messi against Bosnia? Great question. You saw the two Argentinian players at the press conference. It was not Messi. It was not the coach. Two players speaking about Messi cannot do it alone to take off the pressure from his shoulders. He's so great. He had a quiet season. He is ready for what everyone is expecting him to do, to bring the World Cup. We have to Cup. remember in Barcelona when he does that, he doesn't do it all by himself. He has he, that great, he, those great uh, players he, behind him. He is always surrounded by great players, the same like Pelé was, Maradona. Great players need support. Nobody can do it alone. It's not one-man show. And if he has Di Maria and Aguero and the others in good form, it will be a kind of a, a big favorite to win it. But Bosnia, they are hard workers. Suffering let's, people will always bring a and, big heart and let's like re Croatia. Let's remember about Bosnia. They made it to the European playoffs in 2010, in 2012. This is not a one-time success. The character of the coach, manager, tells a lot about the team. And I know him. He was a player in Paris Saint-Germain, Zafet Susic. Very discreet, very serious, very professional, great player, and he knows how to make this modest team to a good opponent to everybody. Argentina should be very careful if they want to go on with the victory after this game. And let's remember one thing, they may, maybe Bosnia will lose tonight to Argentina, I'll say even probably, but the, they seem, they, they can edge Iran, they can edge Nigeria and this group on the way to the uh, second round. Another group to get into action tonight is Group E, the first match in the eco-friendly stadium of the capital, Brasilia. Switzerland will face Ecuador, and a bit later in Porto Alegre, France will take on Honduras. And Motel, I think the big question about this French team is, can they deal with each other socially? Because we saw in 2002 and in 2010, two very good French teams go out in the first round only because of social problems, not because of football. It will not happen this time because, look, before they left to Brazil, Nasri out. Everyone knows because the, the coach was not happy with the way he is with his teammates. That is a clear message. Samir Nasri, a very good player from Manchester I'm City, is out. Sure, that is a message. I'm not sure what is the real reason why Ribéry is out. So two big stars. The team is balanced. And don't forget, Didier Deschamps, he was the French Captain, he lifted the World he Cup. He lifted the World Cup, and he knows how to deal with these young players. You don't have a Zidane, but you have many good, balanced players who are playing all over Europe in great teams. And I think that France will make even better than they think they can do. Now, Switzerland, Ecuador, and Honduras. Who seems, if France really goes first, who seems to be for the best me, for second? For me, it will be Switzerland. And uh, although I don't know much about Honduras, we saw them in a friendly against Israel, not something to write home about. And they lost. And the other team is, you know, uh, they can do. But for me, 
France and Switzerland are the favorites from this group. Yes, obviously France is very good. Switzerland, let's we, we should say they made it to their third straight um, World Cup. We've seen them a couple of times play against Israel. They're a solid team. Simple football, good manager. They play the game and, and, and they know how to deal. They won against Spain in the opening in, in uh, 2010. Uh, 2010 in South Africa. I think they can always bring good results, like Belgium, like the other teams, which very, are very not at watch. the first best, but, but they are always good, good enough to, to do something. We'll watch that tonight. Motale Spiegler, thank you very much for being with us, as always. Thank you. And that's it for us today. Thank you for watching. We will be here again tomorrow to summarize another exciting night of World Cup action. Have a great day.